Wage labor, also wage labor in American English, is the socioeconomic relationship between a worker and an employer, where the worker sells his or her labor under a formal or informal employment contract. These transactions usually occur in a labor market where wages are market determined. In exchange for the wages paid, the work product generally becomes the indifferentiated property of the employer, except for special cases such as the vesting of intellectual property patents in the United States where patent rights are usually vested in the employee personally responsible for the invention. A wage laborer is a person whose primary means of income is from the selling of his or her labor in this way. Topic. Characteristics. In modern mixed economies such as those of the OECD countries, it is currently the most common form of work arrangement. Although most labor is organized as per this structure, the wage work arrangements of CEOs, professional employees, and professional contract workers are sometimes conflated with class assignments, so that wage labor is considered to apply only to unskilled, semi-skilled or manual labor. Various studies have shown that employees generally spend 1.5 to 3 hours a day on non-work related activities. Topic: Types. The most common form of wage labor currently is ordinary direct or full-time. This is employment in which a free worker sells his or her labor for an indeterminate time from a few years to the entire career of the worker, in return for a money wage or salary and a continuing relationship with the employer which it does not in general offer contractors or other irregular staff. However, wage labor takes many other forms, and explicit as opposed to implicit i.e. conditioned by local labor and tax law contracts are not uncommon. Economic history shows a great variety of ways, in which labor is traded and exchanged. The differences show up in the form of Employment status – A worker could be employed full-time, part-time, or on a casual basis. He or she could be employed for example temporarily for a specific project only, or on a permanent basis. Part-time wage labor could combine with part-time self-employment. The worker could be employed also as an apprentice. Civil legal status – The worker could for example be a free citizen, an indentured laborer, the subject of forced labor including some prison or army labor, a worker could be assigned by the political authorities to a task, they could be a semi-slave or a serf bound to the land who is hired out part of the time. So the labor might be performed on a more or less voluntary basis, or on a more or less involuntary basis, in which there are many gradations. Method of payment – Remuneration or compensation – The work done could be paid in cash, a money wage, or in kind, through receiving goods and or services, or in the form of peace rates, where the wage is directly dependent on how much the worker produces. In some cases, the worker might be paid in the form of credit used to buy goods and services, or in the form of stock options or shares in an enterprise. Method of hiring, the worker might engage in a labor contract on his or her own initiative, or he or she might hire out their labor as part of a group but he or she may also hire out their labor via an intermediary such as an employment agency to a third party. In this case, he or she is paid by the intermediary, but works for a third party which pays the intermediary. In some cases, labor is subcontracted several times, with several intermediaries. Another possibility is that the worker is assigned or posted to a job by a political authority, or that an agency hires out a worker to an enterprise together with means of production. Topic. Criticisms Wage labor has long been compared to slavery by socialists. As a result, the term, wage slavery, is often utilized as a pejorative for wage labor. Similarly, advocates of slavery looked upon the comparative evils of slave society and of free society, of slavery to human masters and slavery to capital and proceeded to argue persuasively that wage slavery was actually worse than chattel slavery. Slavery apologists like George Fitzhugh contended that workers only accepted wage labor with the passage of time, as they became "...familiarized and inattentive to the infected social atmosphere they continually inhaled." D. According to Noam Chomsky, analysis of the psychological implications of wage slavery goes back to the Enlightenment era. In his 1791 book On the Limits of State Action, classical liberal thinker Wilhelm von Humboldt explained how 
whatever does not spring from a man's free choice, or is only the result of instruction and guidance, does not enter into his very nature, he does not perform it with truly human energies, but merely with mechanical exactness." And so when the laborer works under external control, "...we may admire what he does, but we despise what he is." Both the Milgram and Stanford experiments have been found useful in the psychological study of wage-based workplace relations. Additionally, as per anthropologist David Greber, the earliest wage labor contracts we know about were in fact contracts for the rental of chattel slaves usually the owner would receive a share of the money, and the slave, another, with which to maintain his or her living expenses. Such arrangements, according to Greber, were quite common in New World slavery as well, whether in the United States or Brazil. C. L. R. James argued in The Black Jacobins that most of the techniques of human organization employed on factory workers during the Industrial Revolution were first developed on slave plantations. For Marxists, labor as commodity, which is how they regard wage labor, provides a fundamental point of attack against capitalism. It can be persuasively argued, noted one concerned philosopher. That the conception of the workers' labor as a commodity confirms Marx's stigmatization of the wage system of private capitalism as wage slavery, that is, as an instrument of the capitalists for reducing the workers' condition to that of a slave, if not below it. That this objection is fundamental follows immediately from Marx's conclusion that wage labor is the very foundation of capitalism. Without a class dependent on wages, the moment individuals confront each other as free persons, there can be no production of surplus value, without the production of surplus value there can be no capitalist production, and hence no capital and no capitalist. See also Footnotes Topic. Bibliography Articles Books Topic. External links Barbrook, Richard The Class of the New Paperback Ed. London, OpenMute. ISBN 0-9550664-7-6. Labor Fair Resources, Link to Fair Labor Practices